first thing that comes to mind when I hear the name Alex Saar is a seven foot monster that dominated those two games against the G League Ignite, and that was a long time ago. The 19 year old seven foot one center is currently sitting at number two overall in the majority of NBA draft boards, which is interesting because the Hawks are a team in a unique situation, holding the unlikely first pick in the draft. It was another mediocre season after what feels like an eternity since they made the conference finals, and they now find themselves in between the rebuild or win now conversations. There's a lot of rumors surrounding the Trey and DeJounte backcourt, but before jumping into the Alex Sar film, let's look at where the Hawks stand. For some positives in terms of offense, this team really didn't have a problem putting points on the board, fifth overall in points per game. They were also a very good rebounding team that ranked sixth, this was also a team that was routinely getting to the free throw line, seventh overall while also ranking eighth in free throw percentage. They have one of the league's best pick and roll operators in Trey, who led the league in points per game off pick and rolls, who's also finished both top three in assists and top 10 in free throw attempts every year since 2019. The negatives for this team, and there's a lot of them, defense. Really their biggest problem all year long aside from injuries, 27th in defensive rating. They're also a ridiculously streaky three-point shooting team, 17th, which was disastrous for them given the fact that on nights where they couldn't get shots to fall, they obviously couldn't rely on defense to make up for it. They didn't take care of the ball well either. Middle of the pack in turnovers. There's a glaring DeAndre Hunter problem that I think Hawks fans have accepted he's not going to take the leap they've expected. He's a streaky shooter with bad habits who takes bad shots. Just seems like the same player for the most part, which is concerning, who shows glimpses every once in a while that make you take back the trade thoughts before going back to the disappointing player he's been. Bogey, though streaky, is a lot of fun to watch and I think is a positive for this team because he's one of the few reliable guys that helps them win games. He has a ton of experience, isn't afraid of big moments, and frankly is a talent that's sadly being wasted through the bad years. I don't really want to go down the line, so I'll name one other bright spot, which is Jalen Johnson. He had a really good year, a much needed talent that pairs excellently with Trey's pick and roll game. Jalen's a guy that runs the floor well, has great athleticism to go with smooth finishing around the rim, and also a slowly improving jump shot, which is incredibly important for this team. Now for the Alex Sar stuff you came for. Finally! Aside from the mobility he has with his 7-1 frame, it's his surprisingly well-rounded yet still raw potential he possesses, which I attribute to the many different places he stopped by for basketball. He played in Spain for Real Madrid's junior team, an international powerhouse in the basketball world that preaches team play. He also played for the French junior national team, where they won the FIBA U16 European Challengers. He also played at Overtime Elite, which had a big impact on his individual skill development. And he talked about that with the Ringers' Kevin O'Connor and on Paul George's show Podcast P. He helped France, another basketball powerhouse, win both the bronze at the U-17 and silver at the U-19 World Cup. And he recently finished playing in the Australian NBL, another basketball powerhouse country. So he's been able to learn basketball from many different perspectives, from playing within a system through international basketball philosophies to opening up his own game in the way young talent develops here in the US. Here's his stat line for the season with the Perth Wildcats. Now moving on to the film. The link to these clips is in the description. Let's start with the weak but promising side of the ball for Saar, offense. There's plenty to be excited about with a player like this. He can initiate fast breaks off of rebounds, and even though sometimes his attacks end in offensive fouls, you do see the comfort with the ball and velocity and transition at his height, and you can't help but think of the potential, especially given the fact that his strengths are actually on the defensive side. His speed and transition really is remarkable, and it's gonna cause a lot of problems for opposing defenses when those rim protectors aren't able to beat him down the court. He also has a great first step and loves going into a quick spin move if a defender stays with him, which usually turns into a turnaround jumper that isn't quite there yet. He's able to catch the ball at the three-point line and get to the rim in no time, which will also make him a constant dribble handoff threat if he decides to fake the handoff and take it to the rim himself. The Hawks were eighth in handoffs, and 7th in off-ball screens per possession, two things that Alex Saar loves to do to help the flow of the offense. And I like that Saar doesn't hesitate with his shot, even though it's his weakness for now. He's very decisive on those catch-and-shoot opportunities, which tells me he's definitely putting the work in if he's not even thinking before putting the shots up. No hesitation on the catch-and-shoot threes, 
And in fact, he's so comfortable shooting the ball that there's often free lanes to the rim, but he stops and pops instead. These are the plays where the fit with Trey Young makes all the sense in the world. Trey Young is going to try this lob pass probably 9 times out of 10. And watching these game clips, I notice his teammates often either miss or botch those passing windows for Sar. Even the obvious ones where he's directly involved in pick and rolls. Sar's athleticism opens up a lot of opportunities for himself and his team, but it's obvious how raw he is offensively. If he's wide open or even somewhat contested, he'll take the shot but likely miss it. And if there isn't a clear lane to the rim, it's a bit of a reckless drive or a fadeaway jumper to avoid the defense if they cut him off. He doesn't consistently finish well around the rim either if he's contested, seemingly gets bullied in the post by guys that don't even have real NBA bodies. Also seems like he tries to avoid a lot of post-up contact, just relying so much on fadeaways, pull-ups, and turnarounds even right near the rim. There's also times where he has one-on-one -on -one opportunities with a defender on his back, and not for a second does he act like he's going to make a move, instead looking who to give the ball back to. He just lacks some touch in general near the rim as well, and he looks uncomfortable in crowds at times, but he does show plenty of glimpses that give you hope he'll work those things out. Now for the side of the ball that makes him the obvious choice for the Hawks, defense. He covers a ton of ground with the foot speed and wingspan, which gives him the potential to be one of the best switch slash help defenders in the NBA. And given how many defensive breakdowns the Hawks have, he would help erase a lot of their mistakes. This dude is a pogo stick with his second jump, which helps him recover quickly if he jumps too early the first time. He may not be a bucket yet, but he will help turn defense into offense very often, which is an underrated way some teams survive scoring droughts like the Orlando Magic did this season. Just his presence will close off some of the passing windows and driving lanes, which will force opposing teams to run offense away from his side of the floor if they can avoid him. The Hawks were 25th in opponent points in the paint, which Sar will no doubt help improve with how quickly he can get around the floor. And with Sar, the Hawks could run any pick and roll coverage they want. Unlike Capella, he can flat out switch regardless of position. He can play in a drop and be in multiple places at once with no problem. He can fight over screens if he has to and be right there with the ball handler. His versatility on that end is something I feel the Hawks just can't pass up on. I feel like they can't go wrong with drafting Sar when he's projected as one of the best players available, while also seeming like a great solution for a huge weakness at the same time. My only real concern would be spacing if Sar takes long to develop the shot, because Jalen Johnson and Sar would not be a very spacey couple of guys, and all of a sudden it's a pretty cluttered half-court situation leading many to believe in the possibility of going with another intriguing French player in Zachary Risa Shea. Time will tell what the Hawks decide to do with the draft just a few days away now.